Hi friends, today we're taking a look at a revival series. It's exciting because I don't know if you remember the beloved Koyuro Fupa 02 foundation brush. I might have, I think so, featured this brush in my foundation brush video where I listed a ton of different Japanese made foundation brushes and Fupa is just iconic. L look at her. You cannot live without this brush. Fude Beauty had reached out to ask if I wanted to feature a re-release of the original Fupa 02 made with all goat hair. The one you just saw is a mixture of goat and synthetic bristles because at the time, goat bristles were becoming quite expensive and to keep up with the production of the Fupat 02 and to keep the cost where it was, they had to mix in goat bristles and synthetic ones. The revival of the Fupat 02 will be available exclusively on foodatebeauty.com for a limited time. They're only producing 300 brushes. The brushes are currently in production and if you order by November 20th, you can purchase for $41 instead of $47 and the brushes will start shipping from November 27. So again, this is limited production. They're only creating 300 brushes with all goat hair. The cult classic Koyuro Fupa 02 original 100% goat hair with the black handle distinguishable by the Japanese symbols here on the handle. If you can see, they look similar but I believe the original has a little more hair in there. You can see the size difference. And of course, B-roll. I went in with the original Fupa 02. My goodness, when you have a packed foundation brush such as this, I'm sure all you can think of is the most polished finish imaginable and I do preferably reach for brushes to apply my foundation with. I enjoy the technique of applying in a circular fashion, paddle down method, several techniques where I feel a sponge is limited. You just kind of pounce, you know what I mean? But with the food pop, you know, you know. Even with the brush that was made with goat and synthetic hair, it is an exquisite experience when it comes to applying foundation. If you wanted the food pot with all goat hair and you might be wondering, well, what's the difference? What would be the big deal of buying a, an all goat hair brush? Well, because it is all goat hair, it will take away a little bit of product. I will leave behind a natural finish. Now, I don't know the ratio of goat hair to synthetic in the Fupa 0203. It's listed as 03 to make the distinction between the Revival Fupa 02, the original. The original, again, is all goat hair. And the advantage that I've spoken about in my foundation video is natural hairs have the cuticles on each fiber, which naturally grab product because of the cuticles, as opposed to a synthetic fiber that's flat top to bottom, will not absorb that product in the same way. Because of that, the brush will take away more product, leaving behind not such a heavy finish on the skin with foundation. And I don't know if you remember back in the 2015 era, people were pounding on the foundation, putting a bunch on the brush, and because they were mostly synthetic and didn't take much away, all that foundation was left on the skin. And that's not even my preferred way to apply it. When you saw on the B-roll, I applied the foundation first lightly on my skin, and then I warmed it up on the back of my hand, took the brush and whipped it on the back of my hand to pick up a little more product and buffed in the product from there. I think that's the best way, in my opinion. This is not the only way and the correct way, but based on the results that I've seen on my own skin and from what I saw with other other makeup artists who mimicked the same technique. I feel that's how you get the most beautifully natural finish on the skin when applying liquid foundation, especially on the medium high coverage of the spectrum where your skin doesn't appear heavy and it doesn't look like where it doesn't appear goopy. And I think that's also better for the brush's health and longevity where some people apply the foundation directly on the bristles. And I think that is just much too heavy 
of a of an undertaking for this bristles. I think they perform better if they're not overwhelmed with product and you lightly apply layer by layer as you need based on the coverage that you wish to achieve. When you apply foundation directly on the brush, then the foundation gets into the bristles and then you have to clean it more often because there's too much product in between. Now, even though it's a thick brush, I again, I wouldn't apply foundation directly on the brush. I would work from the back of my hand or on a palette or from a palette rather, and then apply in layers on the skin. If you have the Fupa 0203 goat hair and synthetic combo, I think it's still a great brush. You don't necessarily need to get the all goat hair, but my goodness, the all goat hair, they feel similar, but because it is all natural hair, I find it better to apply foundation in a circular fashion and not to pounce it on. Because if you pounce the brush head on your skin, you're gonna feel the ends of the bristles, right? Whereas with the synthetic and goat hair, not as much. Because again, the synthetic goat hair combination will feel softer overall. So if you prefer that, then maybe you don't have to grab the Revival brush, but just wanted to let you know that is the special they are running. And if you personally prefer an all goat hair foundation brush designed in this way, crafted in this way with as many bristles as you see here with this brush head width, my goodness, and the size. This is an iconic brush. I definitely will film my iconic Fude because there are some brushes in my collection. If someone were to step in a room and I had them all on display, this will be one of the brushes I feel people will gasp at because the shape, the size, the pearlescent iridescent finish on the handle, the size of the brush, how thick it is. I mean, there's a lot going on. And when it comes to how it performs, outrageous. Now this next brush will also be on the iconic list because my goodness, I didn't even know this brush existed. The Koyudo Long Handle Deca Fupa Brush limited release. This retails for $49. It was first released in April of 2023. Never before has his beloved series featured a brush with such a unique handle design. Do you see this brush? It stands up on its own because of the flat base. Look at this. This is incredible. You could just have it on your vanity ready to go. The bold contrast of black and white gives emphasis to the elegant, shapely figure of the brush. I'm sure the first thing you thought, that brush head, died. So Goho Goat, this is the first brush I've ever felt and used that literally feels like velvet. It feels like velvet. There is so much bristle packed into this brush. And I applied my foundation in the same fashion that I did with the Fupa 02 and 03, where I applied a little bit on my face and the rest from the back of my hand. Let me tell you, you don't need a bunch of foundation with these brushes. Again, because they're so dense that sure, even though they have natural bristles, because of the density, it still won't absorb as much product. So you get to use less and you get to control the level of coverage on your skin, where if you start off too heavy, forget it. It's just gonna look goopy and heavy on the complexion. But my goodness, the Deca brush, I was not ready. When I first felt this brush after washing it once it dried, speechless. And I saw on the product page for the Deca brush that it is used for blusher. I had to try. So I went in with Pat McGrath's Color Bomb Stick and Sun Kiss Seduction from the stick, directly from the stick, and then I applied the stick on the other side directly on my skin. Now, this brush is huge for blush and perhaps for these types of products, cream, liquid, blush products, I think appropriate because the large brush head will just pounce the product on the apples of the cheeks as you see here. But I was like, you know, if there is a powder-like product that I am curious to see how the Deca brush will work with, it had to be Suku's Melting Powder Blush. So I took shade 105, which I believe might have been a limited edition shade, and on the lighter side for me. But because this brush is so thick, it picked up a lot of color as you saw here and I just pounced it on my skin. I pounced it on my skin. 
if you have that blush shade that you need a little more from, you need a little more pickup, all right, that you're not afraid to lay it on intensely because the color itself is not intense, but because the brush is dense, will pick up enough color so it can have a little more impact when you apply it. This is it. This is it. I was pleased with the end result. And granted, I did have Sun Kiss Seduction on first. That probably provided a little more adherence to the melting Suku powder blush, but it's okay, it's okay. I just slapped it all on there. On the flip side, definitely not using this with my Hourglass palette because that would just be too much, you know what I mean? So you need to use your own discretion in figuring out which products to use with what tool because there is a harmonious pairing that exists in your collection and you just have to figure that out because I'm sure we've all used tools that didn't perform well with products they were not designed to perform well with in the first place. But something like the Deca and the Melting Powder Blush Formula, Liquid Cream Blush Formulas, Liquid, you know, to really pack on the color when the color is light in the first place, but it, it could do something for your complexion. Okay, first of all, it is gorgeous. You cannot deny the design and everything like the description had said, the matte black ferrule, the pearlescent handle, the kanji symbols here on the base, the brush head itself. Look at this beauty. Incredible. And the bristles are quite short. This is probably one of my most shortest, densest, round domed foundation brushes that I now have on my collection because I have some dome pom-pom shaped brushes that have a little more movement than the Deca one. This is, it stands on its own, my goodness. And if you're like, well, which one am I gonna get, Alicia? Come on, you're killing me. You don't have to get either of them, okay? This is not a video to guilt trip you, or even if you feel like that, don't feel like that. If you already have a foundation brush that you love, because listen, of all the foundation brushes that I had presented on my channel, I have several favorites and I'm sure that you do. If you are looking for one, however, either one will be fantastic. I will say that the Fupa 02 or 03 with the goat hair hybrid is more practical in that it is smaller, you know, it gets around and because it's pinched, I think it maneuvers easily around the face. Whereas the Deca brush, you know, you will have to turn the brush completely on its side to clear the brow bridge and then get around the brows if you do apply them on first before your foundation application. But talk about getting the foundation on quickly, my goodness, the, the, the girthiness is. <laughs> is the girthiness for me. This applied my foundation seamlessly, quickly. I mean, my goodness, and my skin just felt good. It felt a little bit of refresh. It felt like refresh because you don't have to apply so much pressure, but the sheer design of the brush, I think encourages this circular motion in terms of technique and the activity from the foundation application. I feel just as a nice flush to the complexion. <laughs> it's like you gave yourself a massage with this brush, my goodness. And we're not done. We got one more, the Koyuro F04 Mineral Brush. This is also from the Fupat series, retails for $34, all synthetic PBT material. The thickness, okay. Flathead for easy foundation application. And on the product page, it says, as following by our calligraphy brush making techniques, we remove any hair that lacks its tip. This technique prevents irritating your skin. Now, although this is all synthetic, this is the softest feeling brush out of all the ones I just presented. And I applied both liquid foundation and powder foundation. My goodness, I knew the liquid foundation application was gonna hit it out of the park, but the, pow the powder foundation application fam, whoa. I don't wear powder foundation often. And I don't know why, I should. I think it's a great product, especially, I mean, if you're using the Shiseido, like I am here, please, you got no worries. This way this brush applied the powder foundation on my skin, I mean, you can't, can you even tell I have powder foundation on? Now granted, full disclosure, 
although I'm not wearing skincare or using skincare for my mornings and evenings, I have been using Vaseline in the B-roll to remove the foundation so I can demo the different brushes and the foundation applications. So my skin was prepped. It was prepped a little bit from the Vaseline removal and perhaps that played a role in why the powder foundation just looks like skin on my face. It doesn't look dry whatsoever. So I think prep is important, but this, the F04, incredibly silky soft on the skin. And if you do apply mineral foundation regularly, I think this brush is essential because of its capability to apply product in this circular fashion i think critical in ensuring that buffed natural finish when it comes to powder i even tapped on some powder foundation on my liquid foundation side i'm sure you saw in the b-roll and it does not look heavy on the complexion whatsoever it's just my goodness because it's so thick just bringing this brush in contact with your skin, the how the brush is crafted works the product in with little manipulation. But however, if you want to get that product moving and grooving around your skin, this is the brush to do it. My apologies for not having the name for the slanted version. So this is the flat top head version. I have featured the slanted brush on my channel before. This has a pretty significant splay when you press product into the hollows of the cheeks. However, this is also crafted for mineral powder foundation, probably on the lighter side because just from the simple fact that you have or don't have as many bristles in this brush as you do in the 04. It will get product on fairly quickly. I think lightly, you're looking at more light medium coverage with the 04, medium to high. You could keep it light, but you just pick up less product. And I do enjoy the slanted version for pressing in, whether it's cream contour or cream bronzer, shaping it in and around the hollows of the face, even great. I think especially so for pouncing on cream or liquid blush product here on the apples of your cheeks, taking it across your nose. Really nice to cut under any bronzer or blush application you have if you wanted to clean that up. All that to say, Koido makes fantastic complexion tools and i'm grateful that food a beauty has sent these to feature them in my channel because many of you had expressed how your makeup application has evolved when you found the right tool and i think it does matter it matters how you use the brushes with what products you use the brushes the type of density brush length, and also the application technique. Once you've established these pairings, these relationships with the brushes, this is where your makeup application takes off. This is where the application will appear flawless as if it was done by a professional. And I'll say this, the brush can only do so much on its own. I think it necessary to also shift your technique and to refine it, right? For example, as I explained with foundation application, people screw up foundation application all the time. They apply way too much. They overwhelm the brush. They expect it to do all the work and it's like, no, 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 no. First of all, the brush is responsible for blending, buffing in, okay? It is not responsible for slapping on the foundation. That's, that's you. You have to play, I, I am responsible for applying foundation on the skin, whether I tap it on first or paint it on first. Again, have the majority on the back of your hand or on the palette so you don't overwhelm the brush with product because you will then affect its performance. That will also require you to wash it more often because now there'll be more product in between the bristles, germs, and gross stuff because it's left also more wet. Okay? Don't don't do don't do that to yourself. And don't do that to your poor brushes. Alright, they deserve better. And even when you're done, make sure you wipe it. Some people have argued that they wash theirs right away because I am using this on myself. I'm not washing my brushes right away because that would just ruin the bristles. And that's why it is, again, critical that 
you don't apply foundation directly on your brush because that will lessen the brush's lifespan and will also increase the requirement and the frequency for you to wash it more often that will then negatively impact its longevity because we want to keep these brushes as long as we can have them intact to have them perform as long as they can and i think these are the appropriate steps to take to ensure that outcome again thank you to Fine beauty for sending over these koyuro selects and fam hopefully this helped if you had your eye on the fupa 02 revival if you already knew about it but you weren't too sure how it compared to the 03 uh, goat hair synthetic hybrid hopefully the b-roll helped in you arriving to a conclusion if you wanted to buy yourself a holiday present and you're looking at this deca brush I don't blame you. And if you have all these brushes already and wanted to share your experience down below, the floor is yours. Also something to consider, when it comes to tightly packed dense brushes with natural hair, at first you will experience some fallout with the bristles during your first rounds with it. That's why it is recommended that you wash these brushes first so you can rinse out the loose hairs initially and as you use it, the brush will stabilize in a way where all the loose bristles will fall out and you'll experience less shedding over time but just be aware if you don't wash it and you use it for the first time you're gonna get it you're gonna get a stray hair 100 and that is just something to expect with a brush that is just packed with bristles naturally that will happen but not so much with a synthetic brush so if you already know that and you're happy with your goat hair synthetic fupa 0203 that's totally cool or the mineral brush 04 fine too you're not going to experience shedding with a synthetic brush or if you already have your synthetic foundation brush collection on lock you're like i don't need to worry about that i don't even go near natural hair brushes because of that reason fantastic you're good to go i'll see you down in those comments fam and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial of Fude Beauty Extravaganza or my iconic Fude picks. I'll start that list now. Take care and I'll see you again soon.